Well, we had the opportunity to talk with uh, Steve Healy from the Brooke Healy Foundation. Um, and uh, obviously, you guys may know about Cure Starts Now, but what you may not know is the partnerships. You may not know about how we work with many other foundations out there. And uh, the Brooke Healy Foundation and the Healy's are actually uh, kind of that lead in that beginning of that connection to all these other foundations that we uh, talk with. Um, with that in mind, uh, Steve uh, is a dad and uh, his daughter, Brooke Healy, is the reason why he does this. So, Steve, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Um, if you would, tell us a little bit about uh, Brooke, um, you know, how you discovered, uh, obviously, about DIPG, but more importantly, you know, what should we know about Brooke and, and you know, what, how do we see her through your eyes? Uh, Brooke was a very intelligent girl, uh, very perceptive about things around her, repeated conversations weeks and months after they occurred and surprised her, her mother and myself to uh, a degree where we're like, wow, this kid is, is really special, you know, and I think all of, all of these kids are special in some way. Um, but for, for me in starting the foundation, uh, it was, you know, I, I can't let other families go through we, what we went through. I can't let other kids go through what Brooke went through. And I know that I'm never going to be able to save her and she's never going to come back. But I think that if I can fight in her name for other people and uh, it would be um, very soothing to know that we make a difference someday and we are going to make a difference someday as we're chipping away, uh, that this will not happen to other families again. Well, a lot of people are surprised by that. I mean, they look at it and uh, you know, I'm sure you get the comment as well is that how could you do this every single day? Um, I mean, it, what's your answer to that question? Um, to me, to me, it's not a choice. You know, I'm, I'm like all of us. You can go sit in the corner of a room and stare in a, sit in a dark room and, and, you know, be miserable the rest of your life and thinking about what you've lost. Um, and I don't think that that was an option for me ever or my wife forever or the people associated with our foundation it was you know always moving forward in some way and um you know i i definitely see the other side of that and i understand the other side of that but it for me it's not a choice it's just this is something we're dealing with and this is something that we're going to work on and this is part of our life now and that's that's just the way it is you know um, in this, uh, obviously, with Giving First, uh, we're, we're talking about raising funds, but I think folks are also going to be somewhat surprised to see that uh, bringing in another foundation. Um, obviously, we're connected uh, in, in, uh, through research um, and uh, the Brooke Healy Foundation, the Cure Starts Now, and also 26 other foundations all work together. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, that and, and, and why you feel that's important as well and, and kind of yeah. how it works? Yeah, absolutely. To me, that's the most exciting part about being part of uh, the DIPG, DMG Collaborative and the Cure Starts Now and the groups that we're associated with and the multiple chapters of Cure Starts Now. It's not a competition of different foundations trying to be better than others. It's the collaboration of the foundations trying to make each other stronger because we're all contributing to the same cause. We all have the same goal. Our goal is collectively together to find a way to defeat DIPG and eventually defeat all cancers, especially pediatric cancers. And you know, the, when we fundraise and we share ideas and we talk to each other and we say, hey, this works for us, you guys should try this. And you know, we went down that path, that's not a great path. You might wanna try something else. It makes all of us stronger, which makes the entire goal stronger itself. So it's really amazing how well we all work together and how much we share with each other and how much we grow off of each other. And Keith, you, you and I know this, we've each stolen ideas from each other over the years. You know, I've come to your gala, you've come to my gala. I've walked out of your gala saying, okay, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. And you've walked out of my gala doing the same thing. And, and I think that helping us either grow is, is really an amazing part of, all of us moving forward collectively to the same goal. Well, and I think that, uh, you know, so many times people think that uh, uh, nonprofits are in competition with each other. And the reality of it is, is we're not, especially in this community, what we're after is we're in competition with cancer and we're trying to beat it. Um, and so it's going to take all of us because, you know, as you pointed out, we're not always going to have all the best ideas or all the right ideas. And so the, the network is really what builds that. Um, that goes beyond even fundraising, though. It goes into research as well. Um, you know, we obviously you're you're keen to all of the research um, that we do. We share everything that we focus on. Um, why is funding research uh, as a group important to you as well? Well, er early on, before we even joined the collaborative, uh, we had some fundraising, and then when Brooke passed, we were like, "What are we going to do with this to start a foundation?" And then what was what? What are we going to do with the money? And for us, helping families was a piece of it, and that's a, a piece, a large piece of what we do. But 
but the rest of us and myself uh, really pushed for it. We need to change the outcome because when I sat in front of Dr. Swedane and I said, what do you mean there's no, no changes since 1963 when Neil Armstrong's daughter was diagnosed with DIPG? What do you mean it's the same protocol? What do you mean, you know, he said there's not enough money. And I said, well, why isn't the government giving money? And his answer was that they just, that, you know, they give what they give and it's spread out across 27 different pediatric cancers and DIPG gets little to none because it's not uh, a very popular cancer. So I said, how does that change? And in that sentence, he, he said, it's parents like you are going to have to go out and fundraise and make a change. And that's basically the mission we've been on ever since to make that happen. Because uh, if we don't do it, it's not going to happen. And it's evident that since 1963, when Neil Armstrong's daughter was diagnosed with a DIPG to 2008, when my daughter was diagnosed with DIPG and your daughter also, um, that nothing has changed. But, you know, since then, with your involvement, my involvement, all of our partners that we have within the DIPG DMG collaborative and the Cure Starts Now, we have made significant change with the registry, with learning what we're trying to attack, with having a path and not throwing random darts at a dartboard. So uh, I see the change. I see it progressing. I'm excited about the progress. Obviously, we all want it to be tomorrow. That's not going to happen. So we're going to keep fighting and pushing along and we're going to and we're going to see that change. And it's not going to happen without us doing all the groundwork. And that's just the way it is. And we're going to do that. And I know that you're in that fight with me. So, yeah, well, and curing cancer is hard. But, uh, you know, what we need to do is have incremental steps towards I cure every single day. And you know, these, these ways of sharing ideas are, are wonderful. Matter of fact, I, I, you know, even before we started talking, um, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, this whole idea of giving first. And I believe uh, your comment there was, oh, that's a great idea. So my hunch is you're probably stealing that next year, aren't you? Oh, without question. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's genius. It's, it's genius. Uh, I mean, you know, to, to think about pediatric cancer gets, you know, roughly 4% of uh, government funding, which turns, roughly turns out to about 250 million a year and 250 million a year for, for 27 different pediatric cancers with multiple subtypes. And like yeah. we talked about DIPG getting none of it, you know, there's, there's not a piece of the pie there for us. So when you're constantly fighting over funding, like on a, you know, a, a, a giving Tuesday kind of thing where every foundation comes out of the woodwork, uh, I think giving first makes a lot of sense for us to get a leg up and be first and think about the kids first and make it all about the kids for a change and uh, make a difference and let everybody get excited about it. So I think that's great. Yeah. Well, and full disclosure, it's not my idea. It's Brooke. So you know, I'll have to go ask her for permission on that one. But uh, yeah. Yeah, the whole concept is, is our kids don't deserve leftovers. They need to come first. So absolutely. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for talking with us uh, about this. And um, obviously we hope it comes out and we can fund more research just from this very day alone. All right, Keith, I'm with you. Thank you. All right.